Hello and welcome to Crock-Pot Cinema. It is the official launch date for the Outpost 13 Twitch channel. Uh, cue crazy house noises a la that one show style. Good joke, Kate. Tonight we are watching Plan B from Outer Space. Uh, my co-host Matt uh, is busy right now, but he'll be here. He's making a 13 layer dip and I am making a drink called the Plan 9 based off of um, love potion number nine, but different. So enjoy this film, stick around, engage with chat, and have a great night, everybody. <laughs> It's a party in a crock pot. Throw a meal. It's a party in a crock pot. I said throw a meal. It's a party in a crock pot. Throw a meal. It's a party in a crock pot. Let the show begin. So, uh, uh, like I mentioned, Matt's going to make 13 layer dip uh, at any point. And uh, I guess in the meantime, I'm just, I'm just going to walk you through... Uh, Captain Crack. Captain Crack. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, jo uh, joining us tonight here on this show, a special treat, is uh, Captain Kraken! Thank you, Kate, for introducing me. Sure. Do I have your permission to help you make food? I, please, because I don't know how to do what this is all going to be. On my planet, planet 13, we ask for permission to help people. This is very polite. Yeah, I would love that, so. Great. I will now demonstrate the ingredients to which you will need in this evening's performance. I have a question for you. Okay. Is the movie Plan 9 from Outer Space or Plan B from Outer Space? <laughs> it's, uh, plan 9. Yeah, so. Yes. Okay. Strike one. <laughs> Great. I was a little afraid I had to make something else. No, I just uh, messed up. That's all. Thanks. It's okay. We all screw up. These are some of the ideals that we have on Planet 13. Great. What's in this dip, though? <laughs> Great. I thought you would never ask. I am making a 13-layer dip. On your puny planet of Earth, you have only six or seven or sometimes nine layers. But with our technology, we can do 13-layer dip. But what? Can, just okay. Great. I will demonstrate the ingredients to which will be needed for tonight's meal. You will need some sort of ground meat, or it could be vegetarian. We are all vegetarian on planet 13. You will also need chopped green onions, guac a mole, <laughs> assorted sweet peppers. Black olives, chopped romaine hearts, pickled jalapenos, corn, sweet corn, <laughs> not cream style corn, sweet corn. Never use cream style corn.
black beans, mixed cheese, refried beans, salsa, salsa, salsa. Oh, I see. I say salsa, you say salsa. And lastly, you will need taco seasoning and sour cream to which you will mix up. When we return, I shall have assembled a 13 layer dip far beyond your human capacity. Great. Uh... In the meantime, enjoy this film, which is definitely Plan 9 from Outer Space. Do you have a permanent life partner? Me? Yes. Uh, my cat is pretty close to that, right? I see. Sorry. It's all right. I've been rejected before. I will get... in the future, for that is where you and I are going to spend the rest of our lives. And remember, my friend, future events such as these will affect you in the future. You are interested in the unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. And now, for the first time, we are bringing to you the full story of what happened on that fateful day. We are giving you all the evidence based only on the secret testimony of the miserable souls who survived this terrifying ordeal. The incidents, the places. My friend, we cannot keep this a secret any longer. Let us punish the guilty. Let us reward the innocent. My friend, can your heart stand the shocking facts about grave robbers from outer space? That Pira. Oh, that Pira. <laughs> Plan 9 from Outer Space. Hey, everybody, if you're watching along right now, just tuning in, you're watching Crockpot Cinema. I'm Matthew Pittner. My co host is Kate Ingy. And watching along with us uh, is our uh, man on the keys, our technology wizard. Mr. Cody Bushy. Hi. Hey guys. Yeah, you guys want to say hi? Oh. Hello. Did you see that, Kate? No. Bella go see. Oh yeah. Right. I got some fun tidbits about him. Is uh, is your mom watching? I don't know. Is my mom watching? Doesn't she have a super big crush on him? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think so. I'll start that rumor. Well, she saw him in the eight man, and it was kind of like you know, love at first sight. Are we talking about Bella Lugosi? Bella Lugosi. <laughs> Am I saying his name wrong? I, I guess I don't know. Oh. Yeah, I don't know exactly. I'm Maybe making fun it's... of you, but I've heard Bella Lugosi, but Lugosi. I may have heard it from a person pronouncing it wrong myself. <laughs> and that there is a time to die, yet death is always a shock to those left behind. It is even more of a shock when death, the proud brother come suddenly without warning. Just at sundown, a small group gathered in silent prayer around the newly opened grave of the beloved wife of an elderly man. Sundown of the day, yet also the sundown of the old man's heart. For the shadows of grief clouded his very reason. 
who wrote this first part? Like, who wrote all that <laughs> intro? Who wrote that guy's narration? It feels like a radio play. Yeah, it does. In the future, and the, the love of his order, heart. The saddened group left the graveside. This is Bela Lugosi's last film. Really? He died before it was com he completed it. Wow. I did not know that. This, with these two guys here, this is one of my favorite scenes from the whole movie. <laughs> looks like they found like a couple of local workers and were just like, hey, you guys wanna be in a movie? <laughs> I'll say your lines right it before you say the it. The started their task that strange things began to take place. 15 to four. Yep, right on schedule. There's the old San Fernando Valley out there now. Better radio in for landing instructions, Danny. Right, Jeff. Burbank Tower, this is American Flight 812. Over. Wouldn't surprise me any if he's asleep this time of the morning. American Flight 812, this is Burbank Tower. If I were asleep, you'd never get on the ground. Your case, maybe I'll leave you up there for good. Over. You got me that time, Mac. This is American Flight 812 request. <laughs> you got me that time, Mac. Right here in River City? I love how the flight attendant heard the word trouble <laughs> and peeks her head through. <laughs> What's that, trouble? Is that being broadcast over the whole flight? Or like... It's like saying, oops, doing a haircut. Yeah. <laughs> Are passengers hearing this right now? I'll check. Good. We'll get it ready for landing. Keep it quiet until we get instructions. Right. Okay, Denny. Right. American flight 812, reporting to Burbank Tower. Over. She's a blabber, fake Joe Rap. My gosh. Did you hear anything? I thought I did. Don't like hearing noises, especially when there ain't supposed to be any. Yeah, sort of spooky like. Maybe we're getting old. Whatever it is, it's gone now. That's the best thing for us, too. Gone. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Get. Best get on out of here. That's the best thing for us. <laughs> as far as we can go. Yes. Thanks for the bits, Dr. Bud. It almost looks like that's what killed them, was those bits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you really helped justify this movie. And it needs it. The home they had so long shared together became a tomb. A sweet memory of her joyous living. The sky to which she had once looked was now only a covering for her dead body. Man. <laughs> Man, they really drive it home. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> dead body. <laughs> it's a tomb. He was alone. <laughs> so alone. He cried every night. It was raining. Her body was still struck. dead. <laughs> dead body. Her own hand became nothing more than the lost roses of Aww, her Bella. Confused by his great loss, the old man left that home, never to return again. Uh, yes, Paul, did you too? I believe this is shot in the south of California. If you guys didn't catch that, I'm pretty sure he just walked down the street and was hit by a car. <laughs> or um, in his yard. It's a little hard to tell. The old man, unknown to his mourners, this is my second favorite scene. Dead wife. <laughs> dead wife. <laughs> 
tragic. Tell me something. Why was his wife buried in the ground and he sealed in a crypt? Something to do with family tradition, a superstition of some sort. Oh. <laughs> well, it's getting dark. <laughs> Let's just rush over that justification really quickly. <laughs> Why did they even talk about that? I don't know. Like, what are you even knowing? Must have been something. <laughs> oh. The police heard the scream and they were on their way. <laughs> I think it came from the graveyard. I just gotta back out of here. <laughs> You think they would have said that scene differently? She's just gonna take it off. <laughs> Minutes later, the police, led by Inspector Daniel Clay, arrived at the scene. Who found them? The man and girl. Medical uh, examiner being around yet? Just left. The morgue wagon ought to be along most any time. <laughs> you get there, Stephen? It yeah, is. It's passing there. days. They're like, left and right. I don't know how much time is going to like this <laughs> <to> make any. <laughs> Have one of the boys take the guy and the girl back to town. You take charge. Okay, Inspector. What are you going to do? Look around the room. Pretty dark out there. Once you get beyond the range of those lights, you won't be able to see your hand in front of your face. I will get one of the flashlights from the patrol car. Be careful, please. I'm a big boy, not Johnny. <laughs> he wasn't sure about that whole monologue, but he really liked that last line. Yeah. <laughs> sure his character came to life. Yeah. I'm a big boy, Johnny. Well, I'll just wait here. <laughs> I'll get a flashlight from the tool car. I do like how they made this mist look. It's pretty great. Yeah. I feel like a mist and fog like this is always like a good effect, like a good practical effect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From theater to film, it always just looks pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. Say, Lieutenant, to get that funny odor. Thanks for the bits, fake Joe Rap. We appreciate it. Yeah, they smelled oh, you, Joe. Now. <laughs> Smell that funny odor? That's the fifth siren in the last hour. Uh, something's happened down at the cemetery. A lot of police cars and lights. I stopped, but I didn't see anything. Oh, well, whatever it is, I'm wondering if people care the whole story. Maybe I am. I don't think I've ever seen you in this mood before. I guess it's because I've never been in this mood before. Something about your flight? Yeah. What happened, Jim? I saw a flying saucer. Saucer? <laughs> flying? Let me put down my saucer. <laughs> I can't touch saucers anymore. Dan and Edith saw it too. When it passed over, the whole compartment lighted up with a blinding glare. Lit. Then I was a tremendous wind that practically knocked us off our course. Well, did you report it? Yeah. Radioed in immediately, and they said we'll keep it quiet until you land. And as soon as we landed, Big army brass grabbed us and made us swear to secrecy about the whole thing. I guess I'm screwing it all up right now. And the public ought to know about it. There must be something more you can do about it. Only there isn't. All but what's the use of making a fuss. But last night I saw a flying object that couldn't have possibly been from this planet. But I can't say a word. I'm muzzled by army brass. I can't even admit I saw the thing. Not that muzzled. <laughs> oh. uh, drive by with the flashlight. <laughs> we were 
when he's been killed by this wicker furniture. And where did we go? <laughs> Sounds like crazy trouble. Uh, that apparition we saw had something to do with it. Come on. Bella Lugosi brought his own cape. It's one of his Dracula capes from when he performed Dracula on stage. It's very cool. He's a legend. And I love that he brought his own cape. I don't want to be that person. Oh, according to Fig Joe Rap, the show is Dracula on Ice, I guess. Oh, I trust and believe him. Yeah. He was holding the cape as if it was something very precious to him. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he, knew. he was really... Yeah. He knew how to work it. Yeah. Your guess is good as mine, Larry. One thing's sure. Spectre Clay's dead. So that guy there who's holding the gun that way... He kept doing this because he was really hoping Ed Wood Jr. would notice. And he never did. Or if he did, he didn't care. <laughs> he just kept holding the gun weird and gesturing with it to try and get attention, I guess. I don't know. think we left back up the car, Boy Scouts? Come on. Greater love hath no man than to lay down his life for another. It is always difficult to have last words over the grave of a friend. And Inspector Daniel Clay was a friend, a dear friend to me and to all of us. The bell has rung upon his great career. Now we lay him to rest. A rest
I'm good. Are you all right? I'm, so I'm happy to help you if you need it. I'm so good. Captain Kraken is here to get Kraken if you need him. Wow, still puns, still puns. That's fine. Uh, I'm the good. The puns no. are fun, as we say on Planet 13. Fun are the puns. Uh, anyway. Are you having a fun time? I don't know how to answer that question. Don't mind me, I'm just a man on the pun. You can cut at any point. Man I think we're, on the pun. I think we're, I think we're done man here. Man on the pun. What will their next move be? Your space commander has returned from Earth. Send him in. You have your report? We had to pull in here to Space Station 7 for regeneration. We're returning to the planet Earth immediately thereafter. What progress has been made? We contacted government officials. They refuse our existence. What plan will you follow now? Plan 9. It's been absolutely impossible to work through these Earth creatures. Their soul is too controlled. Plan 9. Ah, oh, yes. Plan 9 deals with the resurrection of the dead. Long-distance electrodes shot into the pineal and pituitary glands of recent dead. Have you attempted any of this plan as yet? Yes, Excellency. How successful has it been? We have risen too so far. We shall be just as successful on more. The living, they have no suspicion of your movements? We had to dispose of one policeman. However, none of those risen have been seen, at least not by anyone who still remains alive. It's too bad it must be handled this way. But it must. Those who we take from the grave will lead the way for our other operations. And so yes, Excellency. Continue on. Report to me in two Earth days. I feared His Excellency wouldn't take our report this well. Well, had he been dealing with our own people, his reaction would have been completely different. He understands the difficulties of the Earth race. What do you think will be the next obstacle the Earth people will put in our way? Well... As long as they can think, we'll have our problems. But those whom we're using cannot think. They are the dead, brought to a simulated life by our electrode guns. You know, it's an interesting thing when you consider the Earth people who can think are so frightened by those who cannot, the dead. Well, our ship should be regenerated. We better get started. I still think you ought to go in town and stay with your mother until I get back. This is our home, and nothing's going to take me from it. Besides, most men try and keep their wives from going home to Mama. That's not the point. That's all the point there's going to be. Not how all the flying flying machine, darling. But if you see any more flying saucers, will you tell them to pick another house to buzz? Why don't they just... Oh, there it is. I was gonna say, why don't they just kiss already? <laughs> I know fake Joe Rapp's been asking for it.
Why don't they just grow old together? But there's something in that cemetery. Get out of this crazy mixed up town. <laughs> the saucers are up there. And the cemetery's out there. But I'll be locked up in there. Who wrote this? Off to your wild blue yonder. You promise you'll lock the doors immediately? I promise. Besides, I'll be in bed before half an hour is gone. With your pillow beside me. Hmm. Pillow? Pillow? Well, what are you going to do with that, honey? Keep you company while you're away. Sometimes in the night when it does get a little lonely, I reach over and touch it. Then it doesn't seem um, so lonely anymore. What are you? What? Uh... <laughs> Crazy kid. Pillow talk. Talk about pillow talk. They do this thing where they kept using the same word over and over. There's the passion. He really there does. Is. No music. No. Just awkward <laughs> shuffles. <laughs> so he's, we like, he's like, don't get too attached to that pillow, honey. I'll be back. See you Thursday. Don't forget to lock that door. You know, I'm not leaving here until you lock safely inside. <laughs> All right, darling. See? He's on it. Uh, <laughs> don't know what I'm going to do with her. <laughs> Crazy kid. <laughs> At least she locks herself in there. Hey! I said lock yourself in there. And be sure you keep the yard lights on. If anyone's been tuning in over the weeks, we've... Uh, Notice that how uh, older cars, you just get in the passenger side and slide right across like a, they do. Like a good old couch. Have you already noticed the boom mic that shows up in these shots? We might have, it might have been earlier. Trip, hmm? You haven't spoken ten words since takeoff. I guess I'm preoccupied, Danny. We've got 33 passengers back there that have time to be preoccupied. Flying this flybird doesn't give you that opportunity. I guess you're right, Danny. Follow? Yeah. There's nothing wrong between you two. Oh, Thanks no, for the follow, one Just that I'm worried. Is it one Anna or is it Leanna? I don't know. Anyway, yeah, I well, don't know either. Thank you. I was deliberating us, how to well, say it. <laughs> it could be Leanna, I guess. Yeah. And it could be one Anna. Mm -hmm. Both are fun. I hope so. If you're really that worried, Jeff, why don't you go radio in and find out? Max should be on duty at the field by now. He could call Paul and relay the message to you. Hi, Edie. Hi, Silence. I haven't heard a word from this end of the plane since we left the field. I've just been giving himself and me a study in silence. The boys aren't cute. No, no, Edie, nothing like that. Hey, Edie, how about you and me bowling it up in Albuquerque? Albuquerque? Have you read that flight schedule, boy? What about it? We land in Albuquerque at 4 a.m. That's strictly a 9 o'clock town. Well, I know a friend that'll help us. Let's have the problem first. No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I read about that cemetery business. I tried to get two kids not to buy too near one of those things. I get there soon enough as it is. He thought it'd be quiet and peaceful there. No doubt about that. It's quite all right, like a tomb. I'm sorry, Jeff, that was a bad joke. Say, I almost forgot when I came in here. How's this awful situation? Mm, that's for me. It sure wouldn't hurt a thing. Either. Okay, be right back. And say, Jeff, make that call to Mac. Nah, not only did she throw cold water on my Albuquerque plan, but now she's repeating herself. How about that Albuquerque ball? I can't resist your charm, Danny boy. <laughs> you could try. <laughs> uh, he's got quite the charm. <laughs> Residents near the cemetery paid little attention to the blast of thunder and the flash of lightning. But from the blast arose the moving figure of the dead old man. Who was turned into a vampire. He's still walking in the daylight, though. <laughs> I think he's just supposed to be dead. I think yeah. they're playing on the fact that he that he played vampire, uh, the Dracula. Yeah. Mm. But, yeah. And they're not going to tell <clears throat> Bela Lugosi how to play a dead person. Yeah. So, you know. He's the king of the dead people. Yeah. <laughs> Hello? Who? Mac? Well, hi, Mac. Sure, I'm all right. Hmm. I just fell asleep. She lied about that pillow. I don't see a pillow there. Tell Jeff That's I'm true. All right. 
<laughs> Wait a minute, there's a man's oh. coat on the chair, too. <laughs> Thanks, Good night. What should I watch on Netflix? He's just shy. Well, maybe he thinks that he she can't see him if he's underneath that. Like <laughs> it's like the camera, like if the camera if you can see the camera, the camera can see you. Oh. <laughs> Wasn't easy to avoid. <laughs> yeah. He did not play that right. <laughs> he's very tall.
something started stinking awful bad. There's something. It's <laughs> a lot of shots of people looking around. <laughs> <laughs> He's him. not a vampire because he was walking in daylight. He's just resurrected. He looks like a vampire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's so funny that they just <laughs> allow him to be that, like, much like a vampire. They're probably banking on it a little bit, right? Yeah. That was the trailers. The trailers was all of him <laughs> walking around. Oh. He's just a bag of bones. Did you see that thing? Did you get it? We got it. What was it? It, it didn't fall. I fired every bullet I had. <laughs> so did I. I don't know what it was or what happened. But unless that bag of bones over there can reassemble itself, it's out of the running now. So often you think I've taken a lease on this place. Not a long lease, I hope. <laughs> I see what you mean. But you know, I can't help but feel the answers out here somewhere. Is the uh, girl safe? Mrs. Trent, you better stay with the car. Stay here alone? Not on your life. Modern women. Yeah, they've been that way all down through the ages, especially in a spot like this. Cal. Yes, sir. Stay with Mrs. Trent. All right, Lieutenant. Now, you stay close to the officer, honey. I'd feel safer with you. Now, the lieutenant knows best. Well, I don't like it, but I guess there isn't much I can do about it. Do you have a gun? No. You know how to use one? After four years in the Marine Corps? Here. You think we'll need these? You never tell. Let's get going. Would expect to find out here. Well, there's only one answer to that, Mr. Trent. We'll know when we find it. Inspector Clay's gray is right over here. Is that the one you told me was broken into? Yes. This it? Yeah. Looks to me like someone had broken out instead of in. I figured that. But that's impossible. I wonder. Look, Colonel, some things just can't happen. Yeah, well, after that apparition that was draped across Mr. Trent's patio, I would say we should keep our minds open to anything. Look, Colonel, I'm a policeman. I've got to deal in facts. But I guess I'll have to go along with you. You know, I'll bet my badge right now. We haven't seen the last of those weirdies. <laughs> They'll discover our ship soon. 
You're going to let them find us? It's the only way. These are the same men who have been so close so often. They must be halted before they can inform others about us. But there were others in the car. They'll be taken, too. Send the big one for the girl and the policeman. I'll turn on the dictal robotary so we may converse with them. I think it is ridiculous in this movie how he has to explain to her, his other fellow alien, how to do everything, even though they're both supposedly from the same place, right? Yeah. It's just ridiculous. Do this yeah, exact thing. The wrong tree. One thing a policeman learns, Mr. Trent. Just general speak. massaging is right that there, right? Yeah. Right over there. Look. I will say earlier that detective was a little little shoddy with his lines, but and him, his gunplay too. He has gunplay, but him as a undead like big thug, he is frightening. Oh, you're talking about the that big guy, Frankenstein that guy. That detective. Oh, okay. The guy from the very beginning. Oh, oh, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He got smacked very hard. Did you hear that? Yeah. I feel like there's a character like him from Man of Living Dead. Okay, we're transitioning. Um, thank you for all of the questions in chat. We're going to try and answer some of them because we're in a bit of a time crunch. So, Captain Kraken. All right. Um, <laughs> please name, from Burp Soda, please name your favorite movies of all time. Captain Kraken, what are yours? Excuse me, Kate. Are you speaking to me? Yes. Did I do it wrong again? Did I say your name wrong? No. Okay, well, my favorite movie is The Mummy. The 1999 one with Brendan Fraser. Uh, I just love it, and I don't have to defend myself, so. Cool. Um, Lizetta Nader, favorite black and white movie? I think it's Young Frankenstein. I'm gonna go with that. Captain Kraken, do you have an answer? An answer to what, Kate? What your favorite black and white movie is? Oh. I thought you were maybe speaking about returning to my home planet with me. No, still no. Um, T Mangio one, how do you decide on your meals? It's kind of a mixture of what feels in theme and um, what feels unique, depending on what we have done the weeks before. Does that feel about right? I'm sorry, I was distracted. I was thinking about your first question. Maybe sleepless in Seattle. I think that's black and white. Favorite movie of all time? Favorite movie of all time, you're right, yes. Sleepin' in Seattle? Any sort of rom-com, really. Interesting. I'm a sucker for falling in love, as the earth saying goes. Huh. Puck90 wants to know, would you rather be a mango or a persimmon? Do you know what those are? I am unaware. Could you please explain? No, I think I'd be a persimmon. And I think that's what a persimmon would do. Then I would be a persimmon as well. Pity Bro wants to know who your favorite nephew is. Nephew? I have 14,373 nephews. My favorite one is... Try spelling that in class. Duchess Lex wants to know when you two will be wedded. I can't speak for myself. Hopefully um, by the end of the day. So we have different ideas on that. Puck 90, when will the cat and dogs get another sibling? If we get another sibling, there just won't be enough of us to divide our attentions evenly and it would be unfair. So um, no time soon, I hope. 
Um, Lizetta Nader, whose pet is the best? I'm gonna go with mine, um, since I don't think I'm gonna be opposed right now. I'm an animal lover. I love all animals equally, as they are here to love us unconditionally, as I am here to love you unconditionally. Piggybacking on that, Team Mangio one wants to know, will the pets make an appearance? We saw my cat earlier. I don't know that the dogs will make an appearance. Um, they are a spectacle, however. Team Angie, is, is that a relation to you? I, I don't know. These are just random people on the internet. Calculations tell me that that may be your mother. Hello, uh, Mom. Puck90 wants to you? know what era you prefer to live in. I can't wait to meet you. Um, you know, maybe the future era. I feel like that could be a really nice time because so far history has not proven to be great. Because that's where we live, in the future, where we all belong in the future. Well, that's about all the time we have for Q&As. Thank you for the ones that you sent. We're sorry if we didn't get to any of them. I have a question. Mm -hmm. If you don't return with me to my home world, will, can we at least be friends? Yeah. Mm hmm. moment or two more, and you will be the first live Earth people ever to enter a celestial ship. Wow. Boy, how could anything that big hype for so long time? <laughs> Never heard metal sound like Sorry for that technical error before the break, you guys. Only my reflection. Must be some kind of one-way glass. Transitioning! <laughs> Transitioning! <laughs> I hope you all have been paying attention, because trivia this week is a doozy. <laughs> you can open the outer hatch now. Yep, gives her permission again. Wow. Though I will say I would like those doors in my house. It would be so noisy at 3 a.m. <laughs> Better the dog out. <laughs> Just gotta sneak into the house, gotta sneak out of the house. Maybe you'd make like a little dog door version. Just like this little like... <laughs> 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 I just as well see what the inside of one of these looks like. Got your guns ready? I'll tell you one thing, if a little green man pops out of me, I'm shooting first and asking questions later. Hmm. It's problematic. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's... That's a systematic problem, I would say. Yeah. We have to kill them. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, wouldn't it be better to kill a few now than with their meddling permit them to destroy the entire universe? Well, okay. um, he said a lot like Thanos here. Those are the words of the rumor. This woman later denied ever being a part of this film. Really? Yeah. Wow. I don't know why. I mean, I know why, but I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, I know why, but I don't know why. We will do as you command. For the moment. No, for the moment about it. You just do as I tell you. Uh-oh, what's going to happen? You do not need guns. Maybe we think we do. <laughs> they would be of no use to you now. They've been mighty useful before on Flesh and Blood. And you two look like you've got a lot of both. Spoken like a true American. True. They would be effective upon us. If you were to have the opportunity to use them, Mister, if you don't get away from that control board, I'll show you just how effective they can be. Shall we talk now or wait? Your friends will be here shortly. What friends? Oh. <laughs> 
This guy's got nothing to live for, clearly. Sure you no harm has come to her. Would you like to see? Oh wow. Next time you try that, I won't aim at the board. You're a headstrong young man. I was only going to turn on the televisor. It's a great excuse for when you miss your shot terribly. <laughs> Next time I won't aim for the thing I missed Go ahead, on. <laughs> She's only fainted. You fiend. I? A fiend? I am a soldier of our planet. I? A fiend? We did not come here as enemies. We came only with friendly intentions. To talk. To ask your aid. Our aid? Yes. Your aid for the whole universe. But your governments of Earth refused even to accept our existence. Even though you've seen us, heard our messages, you still refuse to accept us. Why is it so important that you want to contact the governments of our Earth? Because of death. Because all you of Earth are idiots. Now you just hold on, Buster. No, you hold on. First was your firecracker, a harmless explosive. Then your hand grenade. They began to kill your own people a few at a time. Then the bomb. Then a larger bomb. Many people are killed at one time. Then your scientists stumbled upon the atom bomb. Split the atom. Then the hydrogen bomb, where you actually explode the air itself. Now you can keep <coughs> the total destruction of the entire universe. Excuse you. Served by our son. It's okay. Don't be sorry. I'm sorry. This is what people do. Is the solar benight. But there's no such thing. Perhaps to you. But we've known it for centuries. Your scientists will stumble upon it as they have all the others. But the juvenile minds which you possess will not comprehend its strength until it's too late. You're way above our head. The solar night no pun is intended below the actual <laughs> particles of sunlight but that's impossible even now your scientists are working on a way to harness the sun's rays the rays of sunlight are minute particles is it so far from your imagination they cannot do as i have suggested why a particle of sunlight can't even be seen or measured can you see or measure an atom yet you can explode one a ray of sunlight is made up of many atoms so what if we do develop this solonite bomb? We'd be even a stronger nation than now. Strong. You see? You see? Your stupid minds. Stupid. Stupid. <laughs> Nobody calls me stupid. <laughs> it's because of men like you that all must be destroyed. Headstrong. Violent. No use of the mind God gave him. You talk of God? You also think it impossible that we too might think of God? You, who wear the uniform of your country, you see, I wear the uniform of my country. Yes, we've had to use drastic means to get to you, but you left us no alternative. When you have the soul of a night, you have nothing, nor does the universe. You speak of solar and night, but just what is it? Take a can of your gasoline. Say, this can of gasoline is the sun. Now, you spread a thin line of it to a ball, representing the earth. Now, the gasoline represents the sunlight, the sun particles. Here we saturate the ball with the gasoline, the sunlight. Then we put a flame to the ball. The flame will speedily travel around the earth, back along the line of gasoline to the can or the sun itself. It will explode this source and spread to every place that gasoline, our sunlight, touches. Explode the sunlight here, gentlemen. You explode the universe. 
Explode the sunlight here, and a chain reaction will occur direct to the sun itself. Direct. And to all the planets that sunlight touches. <laughs> yes, Paul to too. So many lectures. This is why you must be stopped. This is why any means must be used to stop you. In a friendly manner. Or as it seems, you want it. He's mad. Mad? Is it mad that you destroy other people to save yourselves? You have done this. Is it mad that one country must destroy another to save themselves? You have also done this. How then is it mad that one planet must destroy another who threatens the very existence? That's enough! Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Oh. Wow. My land, women are not okay. The race, not for fighting man's battle. Hmm. What did he say? Life is not so expensive on my Something really misogynist. Yeah. It wasn't good. Yeah. Our entire aim is for the development of our planet. Get him, Puck90. Yeah. I asked for lots of help. You sounded drunk or something on the radio. I didn't see it with my own eyes. I'd never believe it. <laughs> what? Because I've heard you drunk on the radio before. Look, what are you trying to say? If you don't make sense, we'll never get to the bottom of this. Now, who slugged you? Inspector Clay. What? It was Clay, all right. Only not like we remembered him. Well, his wife was busted into, wasn't it? Next, you'll tell me you saw skeletons. We did, earlier. Now I know you're off your rocker. All of us saw it, the lieutenant, the colonel, everybody. Where's the lieutenant now? We gotta find him. The is gone. I was left here to guard her. Thanks for the subscription. Thanks for the sub. Thank you so much. And the second time that I'm not getting darn tired of it. Which way were they going? Off that way. Come on. Thank you so much. That is a great laugh. That <laughs> <laughs> is. That's why he was cast. Uh, do, do your laugh one more time, please. Yeah. <laughs> she is unarmed. But he would kill in seconds if I so choose. Ooh, thanks for the bits, Arlo Sanders. Ooh. Appreciate it. Yum. Looks like you're going for that number one slot, I can see. <laughs> Getting closer. These cops. It's play all right, there's no mistaking that. And he's got Mrs. Trent. Get your gun ready. From all I've seen tonight, guns won't do any good. Clay is dead, and we buried him. How are we gonna kill somebody that's already dead? Dead! And yet there he stands. That other one earlier, I it's very theatrical <laughs> at times. Mm -hmm. Like they're they're very theatrical. Very theatrical. Yeah. Both these guys dead, are playing to the back dead. of the house. The back of the house. Look, I've got an idea. There's a camera way back there that has to see you. I'm gonna sneak up behind him and walk him over the head. That ought to make a move. Follow me. Even when Clay was alive, he couldn't run fast enough to catch me. So when he does, you grab Mrs. Trent and run like lightning in the opposite direction. Oh, you think it'll work? Know of anything else to try? Oh, I'll be all right. Take care of the others. Your men have felled the big one. This could only happen because the electrode ray is off. 
He'll walk again when I turn it on. All that? Right there. Suppose the lieutenant and the others are in that thing. Well, well, supposing they're Martians or something in there. Come on, let's go. Open up in there. Open up. Get that door open. Colonel, I wouldn't know one switch from another. <laughs> Ghoul. A ghoul. For zomb zomboids as well in this movie. We gotta have some zombies called ghouls. Ghouls. Flaming saucer hurling through the sky. Quickly, get to space where there's no oxygen so the fire will go out. That's a good call. They would know that if they truly were smart oh aliens. My oh gosh. my gosh. I wonder how much this his hair cost to do. That's a good question. And you will never know it, for they will be from outer space. Many scientists believe that another world is watching us this moment. We once laughed at the horseless carriage, the airplane, the telephone, the electric light, vitamins, radio, and even television. And now some of us laugh at outer space. God help us in the future. Thank you for watching Plan 9 from Outer Space today on Crock-Pot Cinema. I hope you enjoyed the film and learned some extra recipes to throw in your less sufficient layer dips um, and try out. This actually came up pretty good. So try making one of these at home if you have the ingredients or just make something up because that can be Plan 10. Um, we have a website for Outpost. It's outpost13 with 13 spelled out, dot com, dot com, I knew it. Um, you can get shirts and stickers and mugs and posters, lots of cool stuff, go check that out. Keep watching this channel, there's more programming tonight and then, you know, the rest of the week 
uh, in, at infinity. So just always keep on, subscribe, join chat right now for trivia. Um, what else? Thank you to everybody who helped put this together. It's been a really great day. And um, do you have anything else to say, Captain Kraken? I would just like to say thank you for this opportunity to come to planet Earth and to learn and to most of all meet you, Kate, and learn from you. I've learned so much about dating and recreational life here on Earth and I want you to know that I value your friendship. And I will be returning to my planet, Planet 13, with all the knowledge about romance and life. I appreciate everything you've done. I now will return to my planet. Goodbye, Kate. Okay. Good. All right. Well, I get all this dip to myself, so I'm going to get in there. It's kind of hard to get more than one layer. I will return to my planet shortly. You're just standing behind me back there? I will be returning to my planet shortly. Great. Super. Thank you, Kate. I will not forget you, Kate. Kate Inge, I... Forever in your debt, Kate Inge. Okay. Please enjoy my dip. It is really good. When you look to the moon, remember me, Kate, Captain Kraken. There's a party in a crock pot. Throw a meal. It's a party in a crock pot. I said throw a meal. There's a party in a crock pot. Throw a meal. It's a party in a crock pot. Let the show begin.